This song here I'd like to do uh, because it has to deal with uh, potential and how God sees you compared to someone else. Could you start it over again, please? Everybody needs to hear that out there, by the way. Absolutely. How God sees you, not how you see yourself. That's right. That's important. One by one, Jesse's sons came before the prophet. They knew someday a king would soon be found. Each one passed except the last. No one thought to call him. No, surely he would never wear a crown But when others see a shepherd boy God will see a king Even though your life seems filled With ordinary things In just a moment he can touch you and everything will change when others see a shepherd boy God will see a king one by one Problems come and dreams they get shattered. Sometimes it's hard to understand. Things like chance and circumstance, they don't really matter. For the Father holds tomorrow in his hands but when others see a shepherd boy God will see a king even though your life seems filled with ordinary things in just a moment he can touch you and everything will change When others see a shepherd boy God will see a king Well, it wasn't the oldest It wasn't the youngest Chosen on the day Though the guards fell the nations trembled when they got in his way. When others see a shepherd boy, God will see a king. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things, in just a moment, 
He can touch you And everything will change When others see A shepherd boy God will see A king God will see a king. You know, Brother Wayne, that's, yeah. that's an important song. Yeah, I like that song. Uh, that song deals with... Uh, how we, how we, other people see us, uh, like like uh, David. They looked at him just as a shepherd boy. They didn't think of him as anything else. Son of Jesse. And they didn't think he could lead. He didn't think he was fit for it. And but yet God sees us differently. God knows the heart. He knows what He's created you to be. And therefore, uh, it shows how God shows us. And and that's the way we should be looking at ourselves, the way God sees us, not the way other people see us. Because they don't know our potential. Uh, they, they can say whatever they want. They told Albert Einstein he was an idiot. So, you know, schools did. and But yet, you know, God knows your, your potential. And you, people don't. You know why I see that, Brother Wayne, is because God looks at the end and then he goes to the beginning. Right. You know, he saw David as a king that forged the kingdom of God on earth. Right. Brought Israel and Judah together, you know, as one nation. And uh, that nation right now is thriving. And uh, Jesus will one day sit on his throne. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say that David's going to sit on Jesus' throne. Right. He said, I will sit on the throne of David. David, yeah. Because David did some marvelous things. But at the same time, David was a, an adulterer, yeah. he was a murderer, he did all these things, and just like your song said, you know, uh, he was a shepherd boy, but God saw a king. Right. God forgives us of the things that we do on this earth. If we ask him. If we ask him, and we have to repent, and right. we have to do a 180 degree turn. We can't just go and, and uh, uh, do the same sin again mm -hmm. and again and again and keep missing God's mark. But you know... Uh, when even, uh, you know, not only David in the Bible, but God saw Jonah yeah. leading Nineveh out of sin. He didn't see himself that way, though. No. <laughs> he, he, he didn't want to, he didn't want to go to Nineveh. He wanted to go someplace else where it was a lot more comfortable. That's right. And, you know, that's the way a lot of Christians are today. They don't want to go through the hardship. They want to. They want to be in a comfort zone. That's true. That's where they true. don't. Where they don't have to. They don't. Where there's not much uh, uh, requirement of you. I remember I was watching Spider Man last night. You were. And uh, in it, they made a statement. Uh, Cliff Robertson made a statement with, with uh, more power, comes great responsibility. With more power comes great, great responsibility. responsibility. Yeah, ah. and. Uh, we have the power of Christ in, in us, so therefore we become a lot more responsible for, for the way that... See, the point, we have to understand something, and I need to get this out. Okay. That this Bible was not meant for sinners. This Bible isn't meant for sinners. But it leads sinners out of sin. It can lead sinners, but it's not made for the sinner. Uh, the great the, the scripture that I keep talking about as far as homosexuality is the, they, they say that sexuality is an abomination unto God. Well, it is. The Bible says it is. But what, the, but what the message we should get out of that is not to go out and say, hey, listen, what you're doing is an abomination unto God. No. What God is saying, if you're a Christian and you want to follow me, then don't be a homosexual. That's right. Don't be one. Don't go out and commit abortions. See? So therefore, that's it was made for us to follow, not the sinner. You know, the other day... Sinner's not obligated. The other day, uh, Brother Wayne, I was ministering to a young lady on uh, Facebook. Uh-huh. And uh, I think it could have been Facebook Messenger, one of them, you know. I'm, I'm on a lot of the social medias now. Yeah. As all of us are, because, you know, many of us are still in lockdown uh -huh. in the world, uh, even in Canada. Canada right now, the church is getting persecuted in a big way. Oh, yeah. It's closed down. But anyways, I'm ministering this girl, and we're talking back and forth, and finally we get to the point where uh, I asked her. 
I says, uh, well, how old are you? She says, well, I'm going to be 32. I think it was August, or June, June the 8th, yesterday. And uh, I says, uh, have you ever been with a man? Hmm. She says, just one, you know. I says, uh, uh, did you, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, lose your virginity? She says, yeah. I says, you know what God can do? I says, are you are you relate are you right now with with anyone uh, you know outside of marriage? And she says, no. I says, you know, God can renew your virginity for that one special person that He has for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I said, you know, sex is wonderful when it's in marriage. It's awesome. It's an awesome thing in mm -hmm. marriage with what one man and one woman. You know, uh, because there's real fruit. You know, you don't get fruit out of two men together or two women together. No. Uh, I think it's a distortion that Satan wants to play. And I think sometimes they go back in the beginning in Genesis 126. And you can turn there. Let's turn to Genesis 126. Um, you know, and, and that's really the beginning of our true power uh, is Genesis 126. And... 27 is where probably the uh, the distortion comes in. And what does it say in 126, Brother Wayne? Read that. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let him rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth. See, we even over creeps. Yeah, you know the biggest creep <laughs> is Satan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's the biggest creep. But you know where the distortion comes in? Is in 27. You see, when, when God created Adam, or man, mm -hmm. he created man like God is. And it says right here, it says, so God created, this is in 27, Genesis 127. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him male and female created he them. Mm -hmm. Now at that point, Adam was both male and female. Right. Okay? And you know what happened? He looked at all the other animals. He says, man should not be alone. Right. So he needs a help me. So what he did is he separated the feminism from man. Okay? Mm -hmm. And created woman. Mm -hmm. Out of the rib of man. Now, then he says to both of them, he says, go forth and multiply and be fruitful. Okay, mm -hmm. and the real fruit is even in the wedding ceremonies that I've done, you know, for others, is the two shall become what one, one flesh. So they're reverting back, but they're reverting back as separate, together, individuals growing together and looking towards who Jesus Christ. You know, uh, if we don't look to Jesus Christ, keep our eyes on the prize. You know what happened? We'll be just like Peter. What Peter do? When he took his eyes off of Jesus as he got out of the boat. Oh, he sank. Began to sink. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. And then you know what happened? Then he hollered that, that uh, four-letter word, help. Help! <laughs> you know? And it was a prayer. And God pulled him out of the water, blow-dried him, put him back in the boat. But the thing is, we have to, all of us, understand just like the song that you sang at the beginning. What God sees us. God sees us as... Mm -hmm. as uh, Stupendous, awesome. Season and we set. also have to. We also, uh, like you, the scripture you were going to talk about. Uh, we also have to trust in how he sees us. Oh, trust is important. Yeah, we, we you have to trust him that he sees you the way he wants you to see. He, that he wants to see you, and you have to trust him in in, in that. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of pe A lot of people don't don't use trust. Uh, to they use trust to get people to do things they don't want them to do. That's right. Say, you know, trust. If you look at trust, okay, T R U S T. You see, that's the cross. Uh huh. Us trusting in the cross. The word itself has inherited into what? Has inherited Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the scripture. We're talking to talk about trust today. Okay. Okay. Is is an important part. And if you go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and all of you get your Bibles out, it's important to have your Bible when you listen to our program because we're all about what, Brother Wayne? Scripture, right? 
It's all about him. It's all about him. And uh, what's that? What is it? Proverbs. Proverbs three, three five through six. Now three is right after Proverbs two. Okay, all right. And you want to read those two scriptures, Brother Wayne? What, five, five and six? six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Wow. You see, let's break that down, okay? Trust in the Lord. Okay? Trust in the Lord. Not trust in yourself. Right. Not trust in your power. Right. But in his power and what he's done. Trust in the Lord. I think that has to do with salvation, doesn't it? Well, I think I think a, a lot of what we're what we're dealing with is a God that you can't see, and uh, a lot of people have a problem with that uh, because of the fact that that uh, that you, when you're using trust or faith or whatever, you're going into a realm that is unfamiliar with you. Yeah. Uh, you don't have control over it. Uh, you can't see it. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. So what it means is that it's 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 an un let's put it as an undiscovered area. Yes. Say yes. it's an undiscovered area, and I can remember when uh, Christopher Columbus went and discovered America. You know the thing was is that he had to trust God and where and and what God was doing. And they had a great big storm that took him off course. Yeah. And 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 he found America. Okay, fourteen ninety two. The thing is, is this, and, and this is what the Lord gave me. He said, sometimes storms don't come to take you off course, but you, sometimes they come to put you on put course. You on course, that's yeah. right. But you know what book he was reading during that whole trip? What? The Bible. The Bible. Absolutely. <laughs> he was reading the Bible. Absolutely. And, and, and that gave him direction. Right. That gave See, direction. he thought he lost his way. He thought he had lost it. Yeah. You know, try, you know that he was, because he was trying to find the way to India. And... Uh, uh, he thought he lost it, but the thing about it was is that uh, uh, what he thought was what he saw was different than what God was doing. Yeah. See, and he didn't he didn't see what God was doing on the situation, and that's a lot of times when we go through bad situations. That's what we do. We tend to look more at the situation than the one that can get us out of it. That's right. That's right. And uh, uh, we tend to we tend to do that. That's human nature. I think that's just human nature. Uh, you know the self, uh, the self uh, survival self thing. Self survival. And, yeah. I did this and I did that. Right. Or, sort of like in Paul, that one chapter on I, I, I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But let's get back to the scripture. It says, "Trust in the Lord with all thine heart." Now, the heart there that they're talking about is not that fleshy thing that's pumping the blood in our, no. our body. It is the heart is the center of our life. Mm -hmm. So if we if we do that, we trust. In the Lord, with all thine heart, our whole center of our life. They're talking about your soul and spirit. Spirit. And then, and it says what? And lean not unto thine own understanding. You see, if Columbus leaned on his own understanding, right. he would have thought he was a failure. You know, he didn't find it, the route to uh, the India, right? He, he found what? He found the Americas. Right. And the Americas are very important, you know, uh, what happened with the Americas is right now in history, a big point in history. Not that America, Brother Wayne, is going to be important in the end times. America has been important because when it says, God bless America, he shed his what? Grace on thee. And grace is what? His love. His love. Yes. His love. And what the United States... The absence of judgment is what grace is. Ah, okay. The absence of judgment. So judgment is what? What is judgment? Well, I, judgment to me is, is, is God's... Uh, well, let me put it this way. It's like in a courtroom when, when, uh, when the uh, jury comes back in with the verdict, okay. uh, the verdict is given to the judge. Okay. The judge hands it to the bailiff, and the bailiff reads the what the judgment is. The judgment of God is 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 his. How can I say this? Okay. Um, it's his. It's it's his looking over your life and seeing what stuff you've done wrong. It's his final decree. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Wow. And 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 you know what 
what uh, if you haven't given your life to Christ, then of course that judgment means that you uh, have to pay the price yourself. Which is hell. Because you haven't That's accepted right. Christ that paid the price for you, then you have to pay it yourself. So he paid a price he did not owe. Right. We had a price we could not pay. Right. Without him being on the cross. Right. But you see, now it says, in all thine ways acknowledge him. So we just supposed to uh, on Sunday or Wednesday or whenever Saturday we can go to church acknowledge him. I think in every area of your life, including your business life, your your religious life, your political life, uh, you have to you have to acknowledge God in each one of them. Otherwise, you're not you're not uh, giving your whole heart to Him. Whole you're heart. keeping you're keeping stuff back for yourself. A lot of people do that. You know, they, they, want, they want to give so much of God, but they want to keep some of them stuff from this hell. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that. God says to serve him and worship him with a whole heart. Whole heart. And you know what he'll do? Just like he said at the end of the scripture, 6. And he shall direct thy paths. Amen. I'd rather have God direct my, pa my path or, you know, than, than myself. Uh -huh. Because sometimes I don't see myself as... King. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, speaking of that, I was talking to my sister. Which one? Um, Marilyn, my Marilyn, sister Marilyn. Okay. All right. And uh, I brought this thing out about being a king. I, I, you know, I said, I'm a king. Marilyn, Marilyn, my sister says, Wayne, you are not a king. Really? I said, listen, I said, you can call me whatever you want, but I said, I'm going to go by what God calls me, and he calls me a king, so that's what I am. Say so. It says that in the book. Yeah. It says right in the Bible. Right. Where he, he's the, he's king, the of king, kings, king of kings. Yeah. And the what? Lord, Lord of, of lords. lords. Right. Okay. And to be a lord, you're what? You actually uh, make decrees. You uh, mm. you take authority. You take dominion. Mm -hmm. You occupy. Yeah, that's all that's all important. But now let's go to uh, Jeremiah 17. Uh, seven through eight. You know, Jeremiah was called what? The weeping prophet, right? Jeremiah. What is it? Jeremiah 17, seven through eight. 17, seven through eight. Yeah. And for those of you that watch our program called The Greater Understanding, you got to get your Bibles out because we deal with a lot of scripture. Don't we, Brother Wayne? Absolutely. It's all about scripture. It's seven. about our opinion. What's scripture? Uh, Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah 17, and again, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. You know, Jeremiah was, was a young boy when he was led into the ministry, mm -hmm. and uh, he started prophesying, and uh, the king didn't like that, hmm. neither did the people like that, but they knew that he was speaking of God and not of himself, so if we go to 17... He led a really rough life. You know, a prophet's life is not something to uh, everybody wants to get involved in. But here we're talking about blessed is he that trusts in God. Now, let's look at the definition of blessed. blessed what scripture are you at? Uh, 17. Yeah. 7 through 8. 7 through 8? Yeah. Okay. And it says, and it says uh, blessed. Now, what does blessed mean? Blessed means to be empowered by God to prosper. Wow. Wow. That's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, it says, blessed is the man that trusts in God. Now, trust, we talked about trust earlier, okay? And trust is so important. Amen. If we don't trust, you know what, Brother Wayne? We'll just be blown in the wind. You know, we have to trust. And it says here uh, in 7, uh, what does that say in uh, 717? 7. It says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. Okay. It says, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Okay. So if you trust in the Lord, you're empowered to prosper. Okay. And he's going to direct it. And whose hope the Lord is. You see, some of us say, well, we've received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we do that, but we forget that our hope is not in ourselves, but in Him, mm -hmm. in spending an eternity with Him. Well, actually, heaven is not really our home. 
I mean, we all say that. It's not our final destination. It's not our final destination. Our final destination is here on the earth. And the thing is, 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 is what I've learned, of course, I listen to Miles Monroe a lot, but uh, what I've learned was that every everything that's created has to go back to where it was created from. Okay. And we are from the dust of the ground of the earth. So, therefore, we have to come back to the original place where we where we came from. Uh, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? Right. Okay. All right. So, Miles Monroe dealt with what? Kingdom, Kingdom living. Kingdom yeah. living, yeah. And he de dealt with a lot. He dealt with purpose. He was just an extraordinary man of God that uh, uh, he had so much wisdom. And uh, I, I just I feel grateful to God that I was able to get some of that wisdom that yeah. he gave. Yeah. You know, and because now he's gone, and you're not going to hear it anymore. But, but he has writings. But he had his writing, his books, his television programs, and you and know, stuff. A, a big book that I, a great book that I read was Kingdom Living mm -hmm. by Miles Monroe. And if you want to understand Kingdom Living, you should get that that book by Miles Monroe, Kingdom Living. Oh, and it changed your, it changed my life when I started reading it and understood it. It changed the way I look at the Bible. Yeah. You know, before I looked at the Bible a certain way, the way I was taught, and a lot of us are that way. You How know. were you taught to look at the Bible? I was taught to look at the Bible that Jesus came to die for the sinner and 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 things of that nature. That's the way I was taught. Uh, but when you get into the kingdom issue of this thing, it changes the whole perspective of why he died and why he came and what was his purpose and and stuff, which. Uh, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I never knew the purpose of God. All I knew, Jesus, all I know is that he was born in Bethlehem and and mm -hmm. and and died on the cross and went to heaven. And you know, three wise men came. And if I follow him, I go there. <laughs> you know, that's as far as that's as far as it went. But uh, but then I got more in, involved with it with the kingdom uh, series that he did do. Yeah. And it changed my life. I mean, it just changed the way I look at the Bible, the way I read it, the way I understand it. Everything looks a little bit, uh, when, uh, you know, it comes a little bit more clear to me, mm -hmm. you know, than, than what it used to. It, it actually, the, the real true meaning of the Bible comes out. Right. Yeah. And then we'll go back here. It says, hope is the Lord. You know what I say, Brother Wayne? Hope is actually the wings that faith flies on. That's hope. You know, we have hope for this and hope for that, hope in the Lord. And then in 8, what does it say in 8, Brother Wayne? It says, for he will be like a tree planted by the water. Hold on, hold on. By rivers of water. Now, where did we see that earlier? That was in Psalms uh -huh. 1. To be like a tree planted by Bible. rivers of water. Uh, yeah. And water represents what in the Bible? Brother? Spirit. Spirit. Spirit, wis spirit from wisdom, right? Yep. And then and then what is the next thing? And that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes. In other words, in other words what he's saying there is that if we're planted in the spirit with God that when troubles come and they will eventually come. We won't fly off the handle. We won't fly off the handle, we won't sink, we won't we won't uh uh, uh succumb to the things around us that we will not do that. But trusting in the Lord, trusting in the Lord, and having Him direct our paths, right. we know that the people that He brings into our lives are very important. Some people are, some people aren't. <laughs> but we're able to determine that. Yeah, you can. You know, the Lord will show you which ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and how is that done? You say the Lord will show you, but Jesus is no longer here, is He? Well, I think what happens is God begins to show you the fruit of the person. Uh, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So uh, when they go through situations and you and you see them doing things they shouldn't be doing, then you know, then you know. Yeah, but 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 Jesus is no longer here. How do you know? You know, you, is it is there something inside you that? Well, yeah, it's the Holy Spirit that deals with your spirit. Okay. And uh, uh, through through that, the Romans twelve two tells us, "Be not conformed to this world." But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. So, so the point the point is is that that you need. Thank you, Jesus. You need somebody around you that has a spiritual mind and not one that is is carnal. That's true. You That's need true. you need people around you that have that spiritual idea and spiritual mind. That's what the, I believe the Bible is talking about when he said, "Let them be one like we are one." 
say uh, that they come in agreement they they have the same spiritual mind and therefore they 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 don't argue because they have the same spiritual mind you know brother Wayne you and I we agree upon everything right well sometimes <laughs> but you know you know uh, the people that are listening to us have the ability to call in right and if, if they want to understand something further, they can call in on, on the phone, mm -hmm. and we'll give you that number right now. It's 513-512-3200. Uh, That's 513-512-3200. You can call in and uh, voice your opinion on something that we say. Uh, and, you're, and, and also, if you have, uh, let me tell you, Brother Wayne, I, I, I am very teachable. I'm very teachable. And what does that mean? That means if, if someone was to show me something different in the Word yeah. and base it on God's truth. You're open to change. I'm open to change. I'm open to change because, you know, we're a work in progress. Oh, yeah. Aren't we? We're a work in progress. You know, what we thought about yesterday is not necessarily the way we think today. Well, the way God moves today is not the same way uh, he did 20 years ago. Uh, you know, a lot of... A lot of churches that I've been to, I mean, they're still preaching stuff that happened twenty some years ago, and uh, but yet, but yet, God has moved, and God's moved to a new, a new direction, and I, and I believe that God is, uh, what God is doing right now is, is he's he's allowing us, uh, he's allowing the church to feel some pain. He is. And he's allowing the church to feel some pain right now. Why is that? Uh, basically, because of the fact that the church is, has got too complacent uh, with God, so uh, God puts them in a place where they're out of that comfort zone, and they have to they have to rely on Him. I like what you said. He's allowing us to feel some pain. He's not causing the pain. No, He's not causing the pain. Well, I think also I think that uh, uh, that uh, the people. Uh, chose what you, you know, the people chose uh, what they're getting. Uh, they, they chose that. Uh, by their choices. By their choice. Okay. See, because we have a free will. Let's face it, we have a free will. And we can go against God if we want. I heard that free will is not free. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, to me, what free will is, 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 is the, bill, the way that, that we define it the world defines it as being able to do something without having any, uh, 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 without any persecution for what for what you're, what doing. you're doing. That's that's what what uh, the free will. Free will. But under God, the free will does have um, offenses, and uh, we see that in Genesis when He turned around and said, "You may freely eat out of every tree, but." Yeah. There's a butt there. There's a which butt. May, may, Guy may, has a butt. Hey, pay attention. There's something coming up here. <laughs> you know? So he turned around and he said, But out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't eat, for the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So, you know, the freedom has, has freedom of will has, has offenses to it. Uh, there because are restrictions. There are restrictions to it. In other words, you know, even God himself, when he, when he created man at the end of six days, created man, what did he say? He said, he looked upon what he created and said, man, this is, this is good. In other words, the only thing that is good is what God declares good. Wow. You know, uh, a brother in Christ that we both know, you know, David Lieber. Yeah, you know, David, David Lieber, Lieber, yeah. He used to say God has a butt, and he, he went, he says, in Ephesians 2, 4, okay, God has a butt. <laughs> and it says in here, it says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loves us. Mm -hmm. My Bible said loved. I changed it to loves because he's still loving us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's loving us right now. His love never ceases, does it? No. Never ceases. Has no beginning and no end. No end. You know, to know the love of God is amazing. You know, the length, the width, the breadth, the depth of God's love is mm -hmm. so important. Because God is love, and if we get closer to God, we become more like Him, loving and lovable. Yes, I know that's. Anyways, so um, what we got here is the next part of the scripture. Okay, let's let's go back to that. By the way, we got Jeremiah seventeen seven and eight, and then we've gotten for He shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And then what does it say? And what, Brother Wayne? 
But, or cha- or river, river, and shall not see when heat comes. Oh, okay. okay. We talked about that when we when it get real hot, right? And then it says, but her leaf shall be green. Wow. Prosper. You know what that's saying? What? Uh, you know, I what? Don't... Okay. What it, I think it's saying there that the leaves will still be green even though all the heat comes. It means that you never change. Ah, it doesn't change. I, I remember watching the Beverly Hillbillies. I don't know if anybody out there watched the Beverly Hillbillies. Some but one were. thing I liked about the Beverly Hillbillies, they never changed. They never changed. With all the money they had, they never changed. <laughs> They were still the same <laughs> same people they were when they left, you know. They drove the same old jalopy. Yeah, the old jalopy, and they 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 still had their same values, and and they wouldn't let they wouldn't let uh, uh, you know the rich people and stuff determine what they believed in. Influence them. Yeah, even though they had didn't all do that it. Money. They didn't do it, even though they had all their money. You know that's good. You know some of us we get money, and then nobody can talk to them. Uh-huh. Right? They just changed. They're they're totally different. But yeah. they didn't change. They were just They never people. changed. They they still stayed the same home of people. Yeah. They didn't get prideful in what they had. Uh, you know, all the money they had. They, in fact they tried and in some instances they turned around and tried to give the money away. And they couldn't, well, and they couldn't do it. Too much money. You know, so uh but uh, I think that's what it's referring to there when it says that the, when the heat comes that the leaves never, 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 never lose their green. In other words, they don't change. They, they stay put. They don't change. Wow, and then look at here. It says, and shall not be careful. We don't want to be full of care. We want to be full of faith. Mm-hmm. Careful in the year of drought. Now, that reminds me about uh, Elijah. Even in a drought, you can still you can still show fruit. That's, That's what true. it's saying. That's true. But you remember Elijah in the drought. He created the drought by the words of his mouth. Uh-huh. Ahab and Jezebel. He says, "It shall not rain unless the, my lips will create rain." And and you know what? What's really strange? That whole story about Elijah. You know, he went to the woman in Canaan. In Canaan, she took care of him and this and that. And her her bowl of meal didn't run out. Uh-huh. That of oil. But you know when it started right now? is when the drought is over. It's time to go to work. It's time to plant. Well, it reminds me of the scripture of the, of the, of the man that when there was a drought going out, uh, and he had all this food and grain and stuff, and he was keeping it for himself. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he said, I'll have, you know, I'll be able to, eat, you know, eat, drink, and be merry all this during this drought while other people were dying starving. from it and starving. And uh, God called him a fool. God called him a fool. Hey, when God starts calling you a fool, you better, better listen. you better listen. <laughs> well, you know, and so uh, uh, he called him a fool because he wasn't. See, that's that's the difference between being rich uh, with God and being rich with money. Uh, being rich with, you know, there's nothing wrong with having money. The Bible says He will give you the power to get wealth. Oh, without money, you have the right. voice. Yeah. And but it's what you do with the money once you get it. Okay. Uh, you know, I you know, just like with the the, you know, when the righteous man came up to Jesus and said, "How do I go to heaven?" You know, oh. and he turned around and said, "Follow the Ten Commandments." He said, "I've done that all my life. Is there anything else?" Well, that's the wrong thing to ask Jesus because Jesus is going to come up and tell you something. Tell you exactly what well, you need to do. Yeah, and he come back and he said, "Sell everything you got, give your money to the poor, and come and follow me." See, yeah. and of course the rich man couldn't do it. Why? Because uh, not only because he was rich. But uh, he didn't want to lower himself back down to where he was before he became rich. You know what it said on the end of that? He could not because he went away with great possessions. Mm-hmm. You know when you're possessed with something, it mm-hmm. just it's, it's all about you. It wasn't about God. Right. It was about the things that he had. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, you know, I was a, a, a millionaire twice, and what happened was that money. I was so happy that I lost those things after I lost them mm-hmm. because they had me. I didn't have them. Mm-hmm. You know, I was the one taking care of them and going here and there and I had, them. I had my brother once tell me, he says, Wayne, he said, you don't have anything because you give your money away. He said, you don't have anything because really? of that. Yeah. And I said, well, one thing about it, John, there's one thing about it. I may give away the money, but i tell you one thing. What it does show is that the money doesn't control me like That's it does right. you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> my dad used to say, my dad was a very wise man, Nassim Joseph Sifu. You know what he used to say? The money, the man makes the money, 
the money doesn't make the man. Yeah. It doesn't make the man. Right. And some people think so. Oh, yeah. They think the more money you are, the more better of a person you are. Well, that's why some people are stinking rich. <laughs> <laughs> they don't smell that good. But anyways, getting back to the end, you see the last words here of that scripture of, of uh, 17, Jeremiah 17? It says, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Yep. I don't want to cease from yielding fruit. I want fruit just to keep an abundance, you know? Mm -hmm. And the fruit that we have is from what? The gospel. Mm -hmm. The good news. What Jesus did, not what I did. You know, we're not under what they call the law, right? Because if we were under law, we'd have to start sacrificing. We'd have to do this and that, you know? Oh, yeah. It would keep us real busy. Oh, yeah. It kept them busy. But we are under grace. And the grace of God, Brother Wayne... The grace of God has brought us this far, and it'll take us farther. You've heard that song. It'll take us I like farther. this next verse that says, The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Okay, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that, that uh, uh, the, heart, the heart of man is so desperately wicked that you don't even know what it is. You know, you don't know what's in your heart. Only God knows what's in the heart of man. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Bible says the Lord search the heart. And test the mind, even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. See, mm -hmm. there's, what he's saying is that there's always results for whatever you do. There's always some kind of result, whether good or bad. So whatever I do, there's the circumstances to my choices. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But always God, will have. God forgave me of them, though. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you won't go out and redo it. The Bible, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. So, seven times, yeah, and ends up what a winner. Yeah, we can do that. So the the thing is, is that just because you're born again and you're a Christian doesn't mean that you won't fall. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna you're gonna fall. That's why you have to trust God, because there's going to be a time when you can when you have fall. You have to trust God during that falling. Then He knows what He's doing, and He knows how to get you out of what you're into. He always has a way. Oh yeah. He always has a way, but. But that's the enjoyment of life. If you go to Psalms 56, I think that's exactly the next scripture that, that is what you're talking about. Psalms 56. And David was not the only psalmist. You know that? Moses even did a psalm and uh, quite a few others. But Psalm 56, 56, uh, 3. And I think, I think that has an answer to what you were talking about, Brother Wayne. Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Wow. When I am afraid, I'll put my trust in you. You know, there's a lot of you out there that are in fear. Oh, yeah. You know, the government wants you in fear. There's mm -hmm. certain globalists that want you in fear. We're not supposed to talk about politics, but we can get out of there. Yeah, politics. we get out of there. Yeah, but no, the globalists that want to take over our way of life, okay, um, that think they're in power and control, they're not. You know who's in I think what they're they're doing is not only taking over your life, they're trying to tell you how to live life. They're trying to tell well, you. They know what's life. best for yeah, us. They, they know, know what's best for yeah, us. To they eat. know what's best for us because they're they're billionaires and millionaires and stuff like that. Therefore, that that we should trust them because uh, because they know more than what we do. I remember when I was in, in Buick and I was running for all night committee man. There was a guy, his name, he was a committee man there, and he actually told me, he told me, he said that, and this is the way a lot of your Democrats and stuff think. He said that these people don't understand for themselves, they need me to tell them. Democrats, wait a minute, Brother Wayne, you know, my family always voted Democrat. Well, my family did, always did too, I'm the only one that didn't. But years ago, the Democrats were a little different. Oh, yeah. They are today. They're a lot different. Than I don't think the today. Democrats today are Democrats. I think they're communists. Oh, yeah. There's you know, no doubt about that. I think it overturned. I think the Democratic Party overturned during the 60s. Yeah. You know, when you had all them uh, uh, rebellious and riots and stuff like that, and you had the Students for Democratic Society and all that kind of stuff that were trying to change from, uh, you know, from the outward in instead of the inward no. out. So, but, you know... What does it say in Psalm 58, 3? I think it, it, you're telling us exactly how the wicked are, the non-believers. Psalm 58, 3. What does it say? The wicked are estranged from the womb. These who speak 
lies go astray from birth. From the womb, the wicked. From the womb. The non-believers from the womb. He said he Well, yeah, because we're, we're, we're shaped in iniquity. Okay. So, and when we're born, we're born into sin. So, you know, we have, to, we have to take on a new nature instead of the evil nature that's in us. What is the definition of sin? The definition of sin is, it's an archery term. That's where uh -huh. Paul got it. And if you, get, if you hit the bullseye, you've done God's best. Right. Okay? If right. you go above it, below it, beneath it, beside it, then you've committed a sin in archery. They call it in a sin. And you have not hit, done God's best. You know, we all should strive for the bullseye. Mm -hmm. All should strive for the bullseye. And who is the model of that bullseye? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He walked on the earth. See, I think that's a that's I think that's what uh, what happens when we take on the new nature. The reason we need the new nature is because of the fact God has given us ten commandments for us to follow in society. Mm -hmm. These ten commandments. But the problem with it is, when, you, when you're living a carnal life, you can't follow those Ten Commandments. It's not going to work. You know, we learned that from the Old Testament. When people tried to do, do it, they'd always break one. And if you broke one, you broke them all. You're mentioning a new nature. There's a few people out there that don't know what that is. What is a new nature? Well, I think the new nature is a new way of thinking, uh, a new way of talking, uh, a new way of acting, uh, you know, a new and, and associating yourself with different friends. A lot of people have their own definition of what being born again is. Uh, I believe that being born again is not only knowing that God exists, but you allow Him into your life. That's well, what being born again. If you is. go to Second Corinthians five seventeen, it talks about being born again, five seventeen, and that it helps you if you if you look at that Second Corinthians five. And you go to 17, it talks about a new creature in Christ. And then it says, let me give everybody a chance to get there, 517. And it says in there. Oh, what happened? They took Corinthians out of your Bible? <laughs> I had it. <laughs> Second Corinthians 517. Okay, I got it. Okay. Brother Wayne, it's on page 1074. Mine's 1809. <laughs> Okay, all right. It's all the same Bible. But 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and what, the, the first word is what? Therefore. therefore. And you got to know what the therefore is there for. So go ahead. So go ahead. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things pass away. Behold, new things have come. All things have become new. So that when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, right, all things have changed. We're become a new creature. Right. You know what I heard? I heard that even the science, if you take the body, the physiological part of the body, and you have a body that is unsaved, and then once they receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, that molecular structure, that body is changed, mm -hmm. even with science. But look what happens in 18. All things, what? All things are from God who reconciles us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So therefore... Jesus came into the world to live as a man, right? Teach us how to live. God and man. God and man. Teach us how to live, die on a cross. He was buried. He rose on the third day. Uh -huh. And what? And then he led captivity captive. There were the bowels of hell. Captivity captive. Took him to heaven. Put his blood on the mercy seat. And you know that blood on the mercy seat? Matter of fact, uh, uh, Pastor Keith Endrickin, I, I, you know, I happened to see him yesterday. Mm. It was the strangest thing. I was at a meeting in Davison. He lives in the east side, Flint. And I was meeting in Davison. Remember, and I was talking about him, Keith Endrickin. And he built such a beautiful uh, research library for me, you know, uh, and lexicons and all that stuff. So anyway, so uh, I was thinking about him. And then I, was, I went and I walked across the street to the gas station. I came back. And somebody's honking the horn. You know, God always puts people back in your life. Yeah. Honking the horn, he says, you forgot about me? I looks in, I says, Pastor Keith, how are you doing? Good. I give him my card, he says, call me, let's get together and break bread. I says, I've been thinking about you. He says, you know what? Lord put you on my mind too. Hmm. Isn't that strange? 
It's not so strange, but that works that way. Oh, yeah. You know, we're all a product of our prayers and other people's prayers. You know, we come to the Lord. A lot of people come to the Lord because of a grandmother or aunt or uncle or a grandfather that was praying for them to come to the Lord mm -hmm. and be crossed. But look, look what it says in a 19, okay? What does it say in 19? Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, not counting your trespasses against them. Let's go to John 3.16. You know, not putting your trespasses against them. God is not counting a card of all the times we sin, right? John 3.16. And John, incidentally, uh, brothers and sisters, and those of you that have not received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're going to get a chance by the end of this program, God willing, if the Lord tarries, uh, and that means if he does not come back during this program, John 3.16, and it's a, it's, a pair, it's a scripture that all of us, even in sports, right? John 3.16, and what does it say in John 3.16, Brother Wayne? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Wow. Believes in him. So we don't have to uh, sign up. We don't have to uh, work hard, although that's the goal, you know, mm -hmm. to be like Christ. Uh, we just have to believe in him, and even those that believe on his name. Now, there's different ways that people get saved. You know, there's different, uh, uh, how would you say, different uh, 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 denominations, okay, which is basically divisions, right, mm -hmm. of the church. Some believe that you have to be water baptized to be saved. Yeah. Some believe that you just have to, you know, go the Romans road, you know, sinner's prayer. Uh, some believe that you've got to work to be saved, and you can lose your salvation. Yeah. But, you know, they're all different. But, you know, we were talking about how God is not counting their trespasses. I think 317 has the answer. What does that say, John 317? It says, for God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Might be saved. Why is it might? Does that have to do with our free will? I would imagine. <laughs> that we have a choice. That we have a choice, yeah. And if we don't choose... A lot of people don't believe that. I've, you know, I've heard a lot of people say that you don't have a choice because uh, they believe in... Uh, uh, predestination. Predestination. Yeah. And that God already chose you before, you know... Well, he did. But you know what? God looks at the end. I don't end. look at it that way. No, we are working through it. But God always looks at the end. He's outside of time. Right. He knows who will receive him and not receive him. Right. That doesn't mean we shouldn't go out and witness. No. You know? Does it? No. Or should we just wait? Wait on the Lord, just get in our lazy boy chair and kick our feet up? Yeah. Or should we sit? And at watch Miles Monroe. Watch Miles Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> or, or sit at the, at the Lord's table. And if anybody needs something, I'm here for you. If the Lord speaks in your heart and says, this is what I want to do for you. This is what uh, uh -huh. I need help. You're, you may be an answer to someone's prayer. Uh, yeah. You may be the only Jesus that someone sees. Mm -hmm. Think about that. That's amazing. That is amazing. So if, if we go now, let's go to uh, Psalms 143.8. I think this is another gold nugget. Psalms 143.8. We go back and forth in the Bible. You know, and it, it's good to, to, to study scripture. You know, when a, when a doctor, Brother Wayne, when a doctor, you go see a doctor, right? And he finds a, an answer to your illness or disease, what does he write you? A script. Yeah. Psalms what? Psalms 143.8. 143.8. And then we've got uh, 143.8. 143.8 is right after 142.8. 143, 143, 8. And what does that say, Brother Wayne? Let me hear your loving kindness in the morning, for I trust in you. Teach me the way in which I should walk, for to you I lift up my soul. Wow, I lift up my soul. And our soul is what? Our mind, will, and emotions. Right. We lift it up to God. Yeah. To give it to him. You know, some, Amen. Of, some of you out there are not saved, and you think you're saved. You know that? 
Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, some people, I, I had a wonderful outreach pastor, Pastor Richard Eugene Blue. He used to say, some people will miss heaven by 18 inches from their head to their heart because it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. But anyways, uh, looks like we're almost done. Yes. We end, and uh, uh, our producer, uh, John Wilson, we want to thank him very much for allowing us to be here. Uh, we started a little late, ladies and gentlemen. Started a little late. Uh, usually our program is going to start right at 11 o'clock till 12. And this is our first program here at uh, All Points TV uh, Productions. And we're, we're, just, we're just blessed to be here. Amen. And we're here, what, for ourselves or to have the gospel go forward? We're here to serve him. To that's, serve him. That's right. We're servants of the Lord, that's well, for sure. And, and I just want to thank everyone uh, for taking your time out to tune in and, and listen to us. Our program is called A Greater Understanding. And my name is Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. You can reach me at, if you need to reach me, at 513-512-3200. That's 513-512-3200. Uh, we do a lot of things, Brother Wayne and I. Uh, he's one of the original wedding singers. You yeah. Know. There's a, and there's Brother Wayne, you want to give him your number so we can get a hold uh, of him? Area code 810-919-2540. And that's what? 810-919-2540. And if they want to donate to keep our program on the air, give me your address. What do we, they can mail the checks to you? Uh, my address is uh, 1339... Um, Maxon Street, Flint, Michigan, 48504. Yeah, 1339 Maxon Street, Flint, Michigan, 48504. Right. And we're, we're broadcasting from Flint, Michigan. And uh, you might hear us say that uh, Flint is the site of the largest end-time revival in the history of the world. That's Flint what it is. is. Yeah, when Moses hit the stone... What stone did he hit? Flintstone. Flintstone. And, you know, Flintstone doesn't res didn't get water. He gave water to 3 million, million people and their animals. And it gives you gas. Shale gives you gas and oil. And uh, we're also televising from Genesis County. Not just Genesee, but Genesis County, where God is doing a new thing. But if, you, if you'd all like to bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me, and those of you that are backslidden, and those of you that have not received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you'll get the opportunity now. Bow your heads, close your eyes, only if you're not on driving. It says, and repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. My Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it. And because I believe open it. Open your eyes. Because I believe it. Because I believe I'm it. I'm born again. I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus. As you receive me, Jesus. I receive you. I receive in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. amen, amen. Now, we're going to be back on the air next Tuesday. Actually, um, I'm going to talk to you about, I have surgery um, the Tuesday, next Tuesday, so we have to be after that. I okay. have surgery scheduled. They just scheduled me yesterday for it. Oh, well, we'll yeah. pray for you. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Okay. All right, now <laughs> yeah, we'll right. pray for you. So, um, so that'll be the following Tuesday? Following Tuesday be what day? The 22nd. Uh, Tuesday the 22nd at 11 o'clock till 12 o'clock. Tune in and you'll be able to, to see us, uh, Brother Wayne Tierney yes. and Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa. And if you need anything, you give us a call. We're here to help. Uh, if you if you want to call in, you know, get your friends and relatives and uh, and take a look at us uh, uh, and, and give us a call. And we all thank you. God Amen. bless you all. God okay. bless you. Thank you.